let's get into it soul not for sale podcast coach calling here we got joe rogan getting a inside scoop from elon musk on donald trump's demeanor how he was handling it when he was being roasted by the great divider barack obama the divider in chief as we so call him the many of us that are initiated that understand exactly who barack obama is at this correspondent dinner now we're gonna get into that then i'm gonna show you some clips because all we saw were the highlights so elon musk gives us a little window into how trump was handling it and then we get a little bit of uh, i found a clip where they give us a little bit of background into how trump really handled it uh during and after and then we're gonna get into where they're where are both of them now? Both former presidents. Well, one former and one current. Let's see where they are today. Let's get right into it. Peanut, you know. They've done such a job of painting Trump as a monster. You know, they've taken the worst things that he's ever said and amp and he's not a perfect person, but guess what? No one's a perfect person. They yeah. don't exist. This purity test, like if Obama was a perfect person, he wouldn't be lying on stage about yeah, that, exactly. that you know, very They'll fine people hoax. The, the, there's exactly no one's gonna be a perfect person but the thing that they didn't understand about Trump is he's so crazy that if you tell him like he can't be president like remember Obama did that during that White House press correspondence you, you know, I, there's I, one I, thing that I'm that I am that you'll never be president of the United States you see Trump in the audience going okay mother like, you know, <laughs> I, the funny thing is I was actually um, at that White House correspondence dinner where you know it's supposed to be a roast of the president right uh, Trump's there He's there. He's actually supporting. Uh, you know, he's, he's basically, if you go to the the, the, the wireless correspondence dinner, you're there uh, in support actually of the president and support of the press. Right. Um, and uh, it, it's meant to be that you're roasting the president. Like Trump's just there. He's like actually, you know, just he's like there as part of the support. And then they they turned it around and just started roasting Trump. And he's just sitting there. I'm like, he's like, yo, I just came to the dinner. I, I wasn't. I, I'm just here to support. You we know? know what it was because of right, the birther stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. what it all was. It yeah. was all Trump was at the head of a, a lot of these people spreading this rumor online that Obama's birth certificate was forged, and he's actually from Kenya. And what's weird is if you go back to Obama's early days, there are some things that say he's from Kenya, like the, I think in his co something from college that he was from Kenya. But you know that could just be you know people print things wrong sure, all sure. the time. It doesn't mean he's actually from Kenya, but. Trump was one of those guys that was like spreading that supposedly false well, rumor. Was he pushing it hard? I'm not. I, yeah. this, this is the kind of thing where I want to like, just go and look at saying what what did he actually say? No, he definitely was. Okay. He was definitely saying, you know, look, he. I don't think he has the time to go yeah. into things like very deeply. Yeah. And so I think he could probably be influenced by a bunch of people like these Marjorie Taylor Green type people who come to him with some wild ass theory. Sure. He might be, and I think there's a lot of that stuff that gets fed to people on purpose so that they'll say incorrect things so that they're easy to dismiss. Sure. And I think uh, there's also a lot of people that just make it up and, you know, they tell you the earth is flat and then a bunch of people watch a YouTube video and they believe it. So, yeah, well, but on that White House correspondence, I was there and the degree to which they attacked Trump in that, in that, uh, at that White House correspondence, it was really, it was, it was so over the top, it was like making everyone uncomfortable. Really, it was really over the top, you know. I mean, I think like sort of a passing joke of like, you know, uh, a, a few passing jokes are fine, but but they they twisted the knife big on Trump in, mm. in that, and and you could see Trump just getting like angrier and angrier and and more and more upset. I wonder if um, and that's it's, and because it's like, man, this is this is not good karma, you know. That's, I wonder, I, that's what I was thinking at the time. I'm looking, I'm looking, I was two two tables away from Trump, and I'm looking, I'm like, man, this is this is too much, you know. Well, it's kind of crazy what what they made out of that because that's the kind of guy that if you tell him he can't do something, he's going to just keep trying. Like what, I, it was a big mistake to rag on him so so much at that White House correspondence dinner. Well, just look at the way they've attacked him in with just using the legal system, like this thing in uh, New York where the thirty four different felony counts yeah. they were essentially misdemeanors. That there are bookkeeping bookkeeping errors that they decided, even though it passed the statute of limitations, they decided to try him for yeah. these. This they didn't identify a felony. Abuse of the law is what's going on. But, but it, it, most people would have quit. Yeah. Most people, after the E. Jean Carroll lawsuit and this lawsuit and all the other ones, that the insurrection thing, the Georgia thing, all these different things, they, they getting kicked off of Twitter, most people would have just like, this is too much, I can't take this. But he's so f crazy. He's like, all right, come on, we're going to war. And yeah. he just digs his f heels in and keeps going. Yeah. 
it's it's the wrong guy to do that to. It, it Just like to to. attacking him at the White House Correspondents' Dinner, most people would have been humiliated. He got angry. And he's like, yeah, all right. You say I can't be president? I was thinking, I've been thinking about running for about 15 f years. Right. Finally, I'm going to run. Yeah. Yeah. That was a real bad move. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I can certainly understand, like, making some jokes about, like, you know, a, f a few sort of passing jokes on Trump. But, man, I was there at that dinner, and... and that they ragged on Trump so much, it was insane. Dude, the reason was, why I would push back on that, because I would say there's a bunch of different speakers, right? And Trump yeah. would obviously be a target. And if they all attacked him, it's because he's like, if you're going to make fun of people in the audience, and especially in the zeitgeist, that whole birther thing was big. Yeah. And most people were dismissing it as being a ridiculous conspiracy theory. So who the fuck is this guy saying yeah, this? Sure. And so you have... Eight to ten individual speakers yeah. that are writing monologues. Of course, they're all going to hit Trump. Yeah. Well, anyway, obviously it was a mistake. Uh, yeah. They shouldn't have done that. And and uh, but like I'm, I'm like you know invite people to watch that the original source material. And uh, I think a few jokes are fine. You know, it's like but but it's like he shouldn't be the like it felt like he was the primary object of the roast. Yeah. Which is that's that's not the whole point of the thing is it's the roast of the president, not right. the roast of the audience. The thing about it is like he's easy to roast. Yeah, and yeah. then on top of that, Obama was like loved and cherished by the left, yes. and most of those people are on the left. Like, there's only so far you can push, you know. You can't ask him about a chef, you know. There's like, certain <laughs> what happened with the chef, bro? Yeah. You can't. There's like certain things you can't so, bring up. You wanna... <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite sport? Paddleboarding? Yeah. Isn't that guy, wasn't that guy a really good swimmer? <laughs> yeah. Tell me what happened. Yeah. You know? Exactly. You, you can't bring that up. Yeah. Like if you're gonna roast Hillary, you can't bring up the death count. Like, uh, Hillary, what's the best way to stay in touch? Email? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, if you're doing I mean, one she, of those you know, she things. She destroyed the servers and poured, like, bleach on the servers, like, like computers. That's, she poured bleach on them? That's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I believe. That's, wow. Like, it wasn't just like they took a hammer to it. They, like, destroyed the, like, there was no possible w way to actually get forensics on the thing. What was in there? I mean, well, what? what, like, what? That, that's what I, I mean. What was in there? What was in there? Why would they care so much? That's so crazy. Yeah. The whole thing. And there was, is so there crazy. was no there was no legal action against that, which is clear destru destruction of evidence. Well, it's also there's this other narrative that always drives me crazy is that uh, he's going to destroy democracy. So in order to destroy democracy, we have to install a president without a primary. Right. We have to have a candidate that is the least liked vice president of all time, the least popular vice president of all time, and then use gaslighting and the full force of the media machine to turn her into the future. And hope, right. and then we're gonna. This, she's gonna be changed, even though she's a sitting vice president. And then on top of that, this idea of change when the Democrats have been in control for what twelve of sixteen years, right? Which is crazy. Like this is the change. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I love that. Look at that face. That's a face of somebody who's waking up. That is hardcore. I'd love to see that. Now, Elon. Now, Joe. Joe's like pushing back here. I think Joe's wrong. I think Elon Musk is right now. The first thing of why Elon Musk would probably be right is he was actually there. So I know Joe's talking about behind the scenes, everybody's writing monologues and everything. Not everybody's writing their own stuff. Sometimes one person will write for three of those people that you see at the dinner, four, five. You Sometimes you watch a roast on Netflix. It's just Tony Hinchcliffe and like two other comedians that are writing everybody's jokes. So why would they all go in on Trump? Now, I think it was uh, one thing he said was right is because he was loved and adored by the left. So whoever was writing all those monologues for people, they were like, uh, you know what? We're going to focus on Trump. And you know why? And now we, we all know this is true now. Back then, maybe not. Because when someone speaks the truth, I'm not saying what the truth was that Trump was speaking. But when someone speaks the truth, we got to bat them down. I think that's what it was more than anything. So let's get into this a little bit. Now, here's the thing where Elon's 100% right. I'm going to start this clip at one, 1 minute 40 seconds. Okay, that's where I'm starting this clip. It ends at 5 minutes. Nine, like, how, how long are you going to go? Here, listen to this. Oh, well. Back to square one. I, I want to make clear to the Fox News table, that was a joke. Um, that was not my real birth video. That was a children's cartoon. Call Disney if you don't believe me. 
They have the original long form version. <laughs> There's a vicious rumor floating around that I think could really hurt Mitt Romney. I heard he passed universal health care when he was governor of Massachusetts. <laughs> Someone should get to the bottom of that. And I know just the guy to do it. Donald Trump is here tonight. Now, I know that he's taken some flack lately. But no one is happier, no one is prouder to put this birth certificate matter to rest than the Donald. And that's because he can finally get back to focusing on the issues that matter. Like, did we fake the moon landing? <laughs> what really happened in Roswell? And where are Biggie and Tupac? <laughs> all kidding aside, obviously we all know about your credentials and breadth of experience. Um, for example, uh, no, seriously, just recently, in an episode of Celebrity Apprentice at the Steakhouse. Hard to see his face, but right there is Rick Scott. Rick Scott, the one that everybody wanted to lead, uh, who didn't actually get it, but uh, there he is, not laughing at everything, but looking back at Trump the whole time. Also, someone you saw that was clapping their hands and laughing, that was Doug, someone that I think Trump actually appointed to a certain position. I'll look into that after. The men's cooking team uh, did not impress the judges from Omaha Steaks. And there was a lot of blame to go around, but you, Mr. Trump, recognize that the real problem was a lack of leadership. And so ultimately, you didn't blame Little John or Meatloaf. <laughs> you fired Gary Busey. <laughs> and these are the kind of decisions that would keep me up at night. Sir, well handled. Say what you will about uh, Mr. Trump. He certainly would bring some change to the White House. Let's see what we've got up there. here that is what he had to say and again i brought it up at one hour or sorry uh one minute 40 seconds before that he was going at him too so he basically wrote like a good five minutes on trump and then he goes back after him again so there's at least 10 minutes just from obama i, I should say just just under 10 minutes from just obama going at trump these dinners aren't that long that's a big chunk of time to dedicate to one person also, because Hillary Clinton was pushing the birther thing just as much. I think she was the one who pushed it first. So, um. Guest host. Donald Trump has been saying that he will run for president as a Republican, which is surprising since I just assumed he was running as a joke. <laughs> Trump's reaction says it all. If No movement. No movement. You, activ you activated MAGA that day. Looks could kill. Now the New York Times says that evening of public abasement accelerated his ferocious efforts to gain stature within the political world. C-SPAN political editor Steve Scully was there. How did Donald Trump look? Was he upset? It was clear that Donald Trump was not happy. He bolted for the exits before the other people could leave the, uh, the Washington Hilton. Music mogul Russell Simmons, founder of Rush Card, was sitting at a table near Trump. So I'm sure he was hurt by it. I'm sure he, he kept a good face on. No, he didn't, I mean, act like a child. He's capable of acting like a child. He didn't act like a child. Now, Donald Trump may be having the last laugh. Oh, oh, how right they were about that. Donald Trump having the last laugh. You know, funny enough, that, that black gentleman you saw with the uh, baseball cap 
Russell Simmons, he now allegedly is out of the country, I think in Thailand. And the word is, allegedly, he's avoiding prosecution for some very odd charges. We'll just leave it at that. And it's weird because he hasn't been back in like 10 years. He has kids here. I, I, how the tables turn. Oh, you know, somebody was acting like a child, but somebody was, nope, we won't make that joke. We won't make that joke on here, guys. We'll wear this shirt, but we won't make those jokes. Let's get into the next clip. <laughs> And so, yeah, during primaries, people vent and they express themselves, and if it seems like entertainment, and oftentimes it's reported just like entertainment. But as you get closer, reality has a way of intruding. And these are the folks who, who I have faith in, because they ultimately are going to say, whoever's standing where I'm standing right now has the nuclear codes with them and can order 21 year olds into a firefight and have to make sure that the banking system doesn't collapse and is often responsible for not just the United States of America, but 20 other countries that are having big problems or are falling apart and are going to be looking for us to do something. And the American people are pretty sensible. Oh, they most certainly are. Well, I just had uh, the opportunity to have an excellent conversation with President-elect Trump. Uh, it was wide-ranging. We talked about uh, some of the organizational issues uh, in setting up a White House. We talked about foreign policy. We talked about domestic policy. Uh, and as I said last night, my number one priority in the coming two months is to try to facilitate. Is to get out. Is to get out is to get out that that's what his objective was oh how it turned he was like you'll never be president even that last clip i just played it was titled trump will never be president oh the american people are sensible they most certainly are they most certainly are sir <laughs> you're 100 right about that but where are these men where are these two men that you see on the screen where are they now oh well one one of them looks very tired very, very tired, aged considerably. Just looks real worried on stage. Maybe you're Muslim American or Jewish American and you are heartbroken and furious about the ongoing bloodshed in the Middle East and worried about the rise of anti-Semitism. Why would you place your faith in somebody who instituted a so-called Muslim ban? who sat down for pleasantries with Holocaust deniers, who said that there were very fine people on both sides of a white supremacist rally. What ended up happening? Seventh president and your 40 extraordinary honor of being elected your 47th president and your 45th president. And to every citizen, I will fight for you, for your family and your future. Every single day, I will be fighting for you. And with every breath in my body, I will not rest until we have delivered the strong, safe, and prosperous America that our children deserve and that you deserve. This will truly be the golden age of America. That's what we have to have. Oh, Barack. Oh, Barack. Oh, it happened again. How about that? It's just, just too bad, buddy. Oh, how the tables turned. Oh, you know, you know, that's how it works when it comes to, you know, I know you guys have heard of the concept, at least if you've been watching this channel since the beginning, you've heard of the concept of the Great Reset. You know, there was a time where Klaus Schwab was really pushing the Great Reset quite hard. Even even Biden was pushing it a little bit with Build Back Better. And, you know, there's this concept that the Great Awakening that we're all promised and that we'll all go through. And you're watching Rogan go through it himself. 
that's going to take place. But the only way that that happens is if the Great Reset pushes things hard enough. And I think that's what happened with Trump. You know, Trump wanted to run. He was stepping up. And then, you know, those people who are wielding that Great Reset nonsense, they just nicked the wrong person. And the next thing you know, the Great Awakening started to form. And it's not just Trump that's doing it. It's the people who are waking up, the people who didn't like Trump and said, oh, my God, the guy's president's 2016. This is gross. This is terrible because those people, a lot of those people ended up being like Trump's the best. After 2020 to 2024, they were like Trump's the man. A lot of people woke up, you know, it takes a push from those negative evil forces for the good in the world to really get riled up and take action. And uh, I guess I guess in a way we have the great divider to thank. Couldn't keep his mouth shut, had to take his digs at Trump. You don't mess around with Trump. Anyways, guys, like, subscribe, turn on the notifications, helps the channel tremendously. And other than that, I'm out.